For bouldering, your shoe should be tight enough that all of your toes touch the end of the shoe, but it shouldn't be so tight that it's painful. However, with bouldering shoes, it may not be the tightness that is causing your feet to ache. In addition, how should your shoes fit for sports climbing, trad climbing, all of that in this video coming up right now. Hi, I'm Sarah from sendedition.com. Thank you so much for watching this video. Depending on the type of shoe and the type of climb, your shoes need to fit a little bit differently. And in this video, we're gonna go through exactly how tight they should be and how they should fit. Let's go ahead and get started. No matter what type of shoe you're getting, it's more important that you're on the rock than it is that your feet fit in the smallest shoe possible. And I know that from experience when I first started climbing, I was taught that you should fit your feet into one or two sizes smaller than your actual shoe size. And this just isn't true. In fact, you get more damage than you would any performance benefit from fitting in small shoes. It used to be thought that, that climbing shoes, the smaller they are, the better your performance because you have more sensitivity in your feet. Actually, science has found that when your feet are in such a small space, the blood circulation in that area becomes gets cut off and less blood circulation means less sensitivity in your toes. You actually need more blood flow for more sensitivity. And therefore, smaller shoes that cut off that blood flow will also cut off the sensitivity you'd get from climbing shoes. So when you're choosing your climbing shoe size, make sure that you aren't going too small because you're actually not benefiting your performance at all. Instead, make sure that it's just small enough, toes touch like I mentioned, but it is big enough that you can land on your feet without a lot of pain. And this was a problem that I actually learned when I first started wearing the solutions was I had my shoe size so small added that with the aggressive downturn that they have, I was afraid to make strong moves in my bouldering problems because if I fell, I'd have to land on my feet and that would hurt a lot. So instead I would down climb. As you can see, that would be really problematic. Instead, you should find shoes that are comfortable for you to accidentally land on if you make a hard move and fall. So as you can see with this shoe, this is a bouldering shoe. Um, but I do use this for sport climbing pretty frequently. And the reason for that is because it's a relatively comfortable shoe. It fits in that my toes go all the way to the end and it has a slight downturn. This is the Mad Rock drone shoe. So there is a slight downturn. It is the LV meaning low volume, also meaning that it's more narrow. So throughout my foot, my toes are touching, the sides of my foot is touching, and my heel touches. And that's how you know that this is a really good shoe fit. If this video has been helpful so far, please give it a thumbs up and I appreciate you watching. There's also different types of padding inside shoes. Now this is Meg's shoe, so I've never actually worn these before. These shoes actually have, these are the Scarpa Vor Force Vs, and they have this like padding in it. It's supposed to be more comfortable when you're barefoot. With this kind though, you do wanna make sure that your feet are a little bit more snug because there is this cushion, meaning that there's going to be a little bit more space between your foot and the end, the other side of the rubber. And the other side of the rubber is the rock holds, which is also where you need to be being able to feel the rock beneath you so that you can trust your feet a little bit easier. So if you have padding like this on your shoes, you probably want to be a little bit more snug with your shoes. In comparison, when you are trad climbing or doing long routes, uh, laced up shoes is really common because they are usually a little bit more comfortable. You can fit them around your foot exactly how you want. So if you have a wider toes and really narrow heel, you can be really tight in the heel and really narrow or really wide in the toes, however you need it to be. Now with these shoes, they're also a flat shoe. They're regular, so there's not a downturn. And this makes it so that you can last longer on the rock because if you're doing long routes, you don't want your feet getting tired from being in this really uncomfortable position for a long period of time. In addition though, you don't want your feet crammed in here. If you're going to be wearing them for a couple of hours, that's really common with trad climbing or with long routes, a little bit more comfort in your feet. So you don't want your toes cramming up against the edge. When you are doing long climbs because you need that extra comfort, that doesn't mean that you need to have extra size, extra big shoes. For example, it, it 
your shoes should still touch the edge of the shoe no matter what kind of climb you are doing because if they don't then you won't be able to leverage the way that the rubber is made on shoes these are called the black diamond aspect climbing shoe and they're a beginner shoe for longer routes as you can see there are laces on them meaning that you can customize the fit around the wideness of your foot and if your feet are like mine you can ha i have wider toes and then i have a real narrow arch area so i do a little bit wider with lacing and then a around the toes and a little bit tighter around the arches. This is my first shoe and the rubber is coming off. It's not, it's pretty slippery. These are the, and I forgot the name of these shoes. The, one big difference with this shoe and the shoe that I just showed you from Madrock is its downturn. Now, as you can see, it's pretty flat. There's a little bit of um, wear from where my toes touch in comparison to different parts of the foot that you really shouldn't be using. This shoe, because it's flat, my toes touch the end just like they would in all climbing shoes. A difference being is there isn't this pain from my arch turning. Now I've actually gotten really used to a slight downturn in this shoe, but if you are new to downturn shoes and you just have beginner shoes like this where they're flat, then if you move to the solutions, for example, you're gonna have a lot of pain because your foot is actually turning. It doesn't mean that the shoe doesn't fit correctly. It just means that the shoe is turned in and your foot isn't used to that. Now this kind of shoe, bending this reminded me that some rubber is much more thick and solid than other rubber. So there's gonna be a little bit less movement in it for you. For example, this shoe, it has quite a bit of give in it compared to this one is like a solid piece of rock. Now this is great for a beginner because it's going to keep you giving you that foot support in comparison to the Mad Rock drones with, but because it's more thick and you're going to be able to stand on your toes more, but you won't be able to feel the rock is more. And I actually learned when I upgraded to these climbing shoes, which I, purchased these shoes after using the solutions for about a week, that these shoes have, are really sensitive on the toes. So it's soft, meaning I have to put a little bit more work into it, but I can feel the rock beneath my toes and I'm much more confident on small toe holds. That wraps up everything for this video. I hope it was helpful for you. And if it was, please give a thumbs up as well as subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. I am publishing twice a week now, so be sure to check out my video later this week. Thanks again for watching and enjoy your send.